Hi and welcome back to another episode of That's Wizard. My name is James and welcome to my co-host, extraordinaire, fantastic person. That's the best intro you've I ever am. given to me. <laughs> I feel so special. (laughs) Don't get used to it. (laughs) I'm mad at you. (laughs) Taking away my snacks. You're mad and that's when you're nice. Yeah. God, you must be quite happy with me normally then. (laughs) What are we talking about today, James? Yeah, so the the main topic of conversation today, last, I took that one a branch off from last week, I remember I was saying that there was not much in the cinema, and then I was going to watch another film, The Gentleman, but instead we ended up watching The Northman. In the cinema. But, I mean... I don't think we've actually watched anything yet that has come out the weekend we've watched it. No, that's true. We always do it either a week or two weeks behind. I mean, this is about two months. <laughs> <This> is... <laughs> there was only three showings of this today. Oh, we're, we're quite far behind on yeah. the North Man, but we've got some things to say. Yeah, we do indeed. Um, first off, we'll also go through our, which would be our muse. Oh, we've got muse today. We've got muse it? today. Oh, I've not done any research. Have you done any research yet? <laughs> No. No? Oh, it's lucky that I was lying. I actually have three pages worth. Penises in there. <laughs> We're leaving that in. Sorry, um, for the listener, for the listener, I just opened up my TikTok and the first thing that... Why is that the first thing you like, comes up? The biggest penis. I'll start again, right? In what country breeds the biggest penises in men? That was the first oh thing that came up when God. I opened my TikTok. I apologise to any listener that is... Upset by subject matter of big penises. Well, for our other listeners out there, do you want to know where the biggest penis comes from? It's Congo. I mean, according to this, I don't from. know. How, it's just this woman on TikTok. I don't know how accurate her information <laughs> is. She's literally been to every country and tested it out. While we're on the subject of TikTok, James, shall I mention to the listener that at time of recording, I have a video that's on five and a half thousand likes. Wow, that that's a, a thousand more than when you told me in the um, cinema we started in the cinema. Yeah, I've had a thousand likes in the two hours, the two and a half hours that movie was on for. Is that impressive? I, I don't know. You tell me. I mean, it feels impressive for me, but whenever you look at a video on TikTok, they've all got hundreds of thousands yeah, yeah. of likes. And no, maybe no, it's not. In my For You page, I've getting a lot of uh, 300, maybe 20 ones as well. So you're actually doing quite well. Oh, I'm doing quite well. Thank mm. you very much, James, for supporting my TikTok career. I'm glad. Anything to happen. So when you get rich and famous and become TikTok famous, you know where it came from. I don't want to get TikTok famous. I want to be... Famous enough that I can meet the hot people that come up on my For You page. Apart from that, I don't really care about the TikTok fame. But if anyone wants to follow me on TikTok, at williams 98 God, I hope our one listener out there is just like, I'm not going to follow him. I'm going <laughs> to chat so much shit. I imagine that my the one listener has already followed my <laughs> TikTok page, right? No. No? Okay. Well, I mean, depending on one listener is you in the future. <laughs> I mean, I follow my TikTok page with my second account, so... <laughs> well, there you go, then. All right, we're going to go into the muse quite quickly, James. So, um, if you would, Ronan, could you take us away with our favourite part of the muse, please? Two weeks ago, James, I introduced our audience to the 14th Doctor, Shuti Gatwa. Maybe Shuti's not the 14th Doctor, we don't actually know. If Shuti Gatwa has been cast as the next Doctor, but a lot of filming has taken place in the last week in Camden. Do you know where Camden is? England. It's in London. It's a sub- <laughs> <laughs> well, England. You were look. You looked at me with like a blank face, like Camden could be anywhere. I was just checking. Basically, they're filming in Camden. David Tennant's there. Catherine Tate's there. Uh, Bernard Cribbins is there. Uh, Donna Noble's mum's there. Donna's husband from David Tennant's last episode's there. There's a lot of people there. They've also cast a car- uh, an actress called Yasmin Finley, who was in Heartstopper, which we talked about, it, or mm. I talked about a few weeks ago. Yeah, I loved Heartstopper, honestly. I can't talk enough about how much I loved Heartstopper. But Yasmin Finley, who is a secondary character in that, has been cast in this. Do you know what character she's been cast as, James? No. A character called Rose. Rose. What does that mean, James? Rose Tiger. Explain to our listener that might not be familiar with 15-year-old episodes of Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a character called Rose Tyler. Most of our news is uh, Fast Fast and Furious and Doctor Who. Literally every week is either Fast and Furious or Doctor Who. We've got to change that out. <laughs> There's no Fast and Furious news this week. Some of these people are going to start thinking we're nerds. <laughs> Do they not already? Um, but ba- that's basically all the news, is that she's been cast as a character called Rose. But I, I'm assuming that Rose is going to be Donna and Donna's husband's daughter, named after Rose. Why, did they ever meet Rose Tyler and she, uh, she met Rose Tyler. Yeah, she... Also, she forgot everything at the end of yeah at the end of series oh, well. four. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. How I reckon is it going to come out around Christmas or New it Year's? It comes out 
November 3rd, 2023. Oh, so we've which is the 60th while. anniversary of Doctor Who in about 18 months or so. There's an, there's Jodie Whittaker has one more episode, then there's this 60th anniversary special, and then Shooty Gatwa begins, I believe. Okay. There's rumours and things flying about. No one actually knows what's happening. There's rumours that David Tennant is the 14th Doctor and Shooty Gatwa will be the 15th, but no one knows anything at this point. And I'd, I wouldn't like to say... Spoiler anything definitively because when it doesn't happen people will come back and go hi you're an idiot you thought this was gonna happen <laughs> i don't want to look like an idiot so i'm gonna i'm gonna say i have no idea what's happening and that's kind of how i want it to be yeah okay you keep the mystery you know keep keep the spark alive keeping on dog do really quickly actually of course uh, you are. i think he, peter capaldi's coming back Okay, that'd be kind of nice. I mean, I imagine most previous Doctors will come back, but there was a little bit of news about Peter Capaldi coming back this week. I haven't seen him do much else. He was in The Suicide Squads. Yeah, no, you're right, he was. He was the evil guy. And he has a show coming out on Amazon Prime next year with that I'm in. Oh, really? Or this year. It's called Devil's Hour. Devil's Hour. How many episodes are you in? I mean, maybe five seconds of one. (laughs) I don't even know if I'm in it, James. It, there's about there's about thirty guys in a prison, and I'm at the far end. <laughs> it, oh, is this the one that you just? I would say you have to sign an NDA, but obviously no. That's know, that's a different different one. Yeah, I'm allowed to talk about this one because I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> just you're toxic yourself. That I it, what James said that there is no film that I've been in that I had to sign an NDA. <laughs> there nothing like that exists. I, I would never sign an NDA. Well, yeah, you're not even allowed to talk about I'm not allowed NDA. to talk about the fact that an NDA exists, so nothing exists. <laughs> I'm not in anything. I hope, I hope I didn't sign an NDA for this. I don't think I did. It's Amazon, so maybe, but... Yeah, I don't think Jeff Bezos is listening to our podcast. Just, just our one listener is Jeff Bezos. Oh, that'd be so guys. great. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, can I have some there's money, not, There's no Amazon podcast, is there? If there was, he'd be boosting us. <laughs> Yeah, Jeff Bezos. I don't mind selling out. I'm not. I'm not opposed to to, to to being a sellout. Jeff Bezos, second richest man in the world. Give us some money, and Give we'll money. help out your your tine little website. Yeah, yeah. we'll We're, give you a little boost with all our listeners. With your tiny, tiny company, you know. God. I've actually got a little bit of news from Kathleen Kennedy. You know who that is? No, no, I don't. She runs Lucasfilm at Disney. So oh, basically, okay. she runs all of the Star Wars stuff. Star Wars stuff. Um, and she's basically the face that people can shout at whenever they don't like anything on Star Wars. Basically, big companies have someone to be the face of something. Uh, so she's the one you go to, guys. If you're just angry at anything... If you don't you like know. Star Wars, you tweet at Kathleen Kennedy and tell her she should lose her job. That's her job, is <laughs> to be shouted at by nerds. <laughs> I reckon she got a lot of hate when they first casted a, a female main character. We're actually talk- You mentioned... Solo, oh no, what, what did you mean? Rogue One. Rogue One. Uh, we're not talking about Rogue One, but we are talking about the other Star Wars story, which is Solo. Solo. Do I like that film. It I, didn't do very well. Do you know what she said about Solo? What did she say? Kathleen Ken- Kennedy says they learned from Solo a Star Wars story that getting new actors to replicate any of the OG characters is near impossible. Now it does seem so abundantly clear that we can't do that. That's that the what quote. she said? That's what she said. Yeah, I could have told her that. But also, Ewan McGregor is replacing an OG actor, and everyone loves Ewan McGregor. Everyone loves Ewan McGregor. And I don't think... I mean, I, Alden Ehrenreich mm-hmm. isn't the problem with Solo. Yeah, no, you're right there. I stand corrected. Yeah, Ewan McGregor did do it. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, and I, I quite like Alden Ehrenreich, Ehrenreich in that. No, I did. I, I liked I liked it, to be fair. I mean, that film has issues, but I don't think he's any of the problem to do with that. But I totally disagree with what she's saying, that... That's the that, if that's the lesson they've taken away from this. They're learning the wrong things. Never mind you're talking about Star Wars as well. As we're talking about Ewan McGregor, you, everyone should next be coming week. Out. First mm. three episodes next week. I you think. sure it's for next week? Twenty seventh. Oh, it was pushed back, wasn't it? Yeah. Again. It's not Wednesday. It's Friday. I'm so annoyed. Why didn't they just put it on the fourth of you know fourth of May? Oh, uh, because Disney Plus had something else out then. Moonlight was still coming out then, wasn't it? God, they really mess, messed up their scheduling by not having it on the 4th of May. And what's the 4th of May? <laughs> May the 4th be with you. And then the day after, what's the day after? May the 5th. Revenge of the 5th. Revenge of the 5th. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that so much. Jesus. Anyway, that's the Star Wars. It's not particularly interesting. No, it's more that Big Company didn't learn right lesson from <laughs> movie that did relatively okay in comparison to most movies. So, What's the next bit of news then, James, if we're moving on? Right, so thank you for handing me all the notes. David... <laughs> all the notes that I've written. <laughs> yeah. uh, you do all the work and I just look, read them out. It's David Saslav, you know. The... Our, our old friend, David Saslav. Saslav. He's the HBO guy. 
Is he? <laughs> well, I'm guessing he's the director. Sorry, the, not the director, the, the lead. He's the person that if you don't like anything to do with HBO, you shout out on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he's that guy. <laughs> He wants to keep all HBO Max original movies at a budget of thirty-five million and under. I quite like that. Well, that's the thing. I reckon a lot of people be like, "Oh, there's not going to be very good movies." But as we discussed last week, a terrific film was made under thirty million. Twenty-five million. That was wasn't it? Twenty-five million. I don't know how much the movie we watched today was, but I can't imagine oh, I it was. I remember it's like. Well, I'll go into the figures. I imagine it's probably like seventy mil. Probably that would be my guess, high. but. And I can read on to the other ones. Yeah, keep going. Margaret Roby as well will be the star in the next Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, this is going gonna, gonna to be quite upsetting because I'm going to miss Johnny Depp in there. We won't go into too much details. but It's an ongoing trial, so we probably ongoing, shouldn't yeah. talk about it. But it's, I quite like Margot Robbie. And I, I think like she'll, Margot Robbie. I always thought they should do Zoe Saldana because she's in the first one. They should do Zoe Saldana's pirate ship. Which one's which one she in the first one? She, oh, she's just one of the crew that turns up. Yes, yes. I, I really like Zoe Saldana. And there's she, actually two bits of Margot Robbie news. She's also Gamora. Yeah, she is. Shame she died, didn't that? Oh, she's still alive, though, isn't she? The previous oh, yeah, they Gamora. Bring the previous one, yes, you're correct. It's just all very complicated. It is very complicated. As well as leading on to the next Margot Mar- Robbie news, she's going to star in and produce an Ocean's Eleven prequel. I think that's all a bit... Is that like, a, yeah. It's a kind of rumour thing. Ah, okay. So I hope, I hope so and hope not, because... You're a big Ocean's Eleven fan. I do really like Ocean's Eleven. I, I like them all, to be honest. All of them had it. Even Ocean's 8. To be honest, I think Ocean's 8 was even better than Ocean's 12. This just sounds so complicated. It's not as complicated as it sounds, yeah. but it just sounds like 8 comes after 12. We should really tell him about Ocean's 1 through 10 as well. So in the first one... <laughs> <laughs> in the first one, it's a prequel of George Clooney and Brad Pitt meeting for the first time. Second one. Well, actually, Ocean's 1 is the... Frank Sinatra one from the 60s. <laughs> yeah, it's all been media. And then Ocean's 9 is where Frank Sinatra and George Clooney meet and he passes the reins yeah. over to him. But he like passes the torch and it's like it's like Star Trek Generations <laughs> where Picard met St- uh, Shatner. If they actually haven't watched any of the Ocean's films, it's going to make no sense. It makes no sense. It, it, I mean, it can't be. No one would have the best film be the 11th in a, in a series, would they? And in Ocean's 1... It's just Ocean, isn't it? It's just, it's just Danny Ocean. <laughs> and then he brings in a second guy. <laughs> you just build a crew each time. Yeah, just building the crew. Would you like to read out the next piece of news? I can read out the next piece of news. That is, Daredevil is coming back to Disney+. Plus. How many seasons are they on? Well, I think what they'll do is start a new. But they did three series on Netflix. Oh. And Charlie Cox is going to come back. But they'll do it as like a six-episode mini series. Oh, kind of like what they've been doing with Moonlight. A little bit like that, but they'll bring back the character and they'll kind of introduce him to fresh audiences. You know what that means? He's probably going to have a higher budget. Which is I would of, imagine so, yeah. Because um, the Netflix one was really dark and gritty. It's kind of like its own Batman kind of thing. I really like... I know, it's really good. It's the. I mean, those Netflix shows, some of them are quite poor. Hmm. Daredevil was always by far the best. Um, Defenders, that's the one. Where they, no, where Defenders, they all meet. Iron Fist, that was... The worst one out of them. I, I watched like two episodes. Yeah, it's awful. I didn't watch much Luke Cage. I watched the first season of Jessica Jones. Because David Tennant was because, in it. Because uh, my mate David Tennant was in it. My mate David I met him me once. And, me and my D. <laughs> no, I, I, I like Daredevil. They're not bringing back any of the original creative team. So uh, her, new Drew Gooding wrote and uh, was a showrunner on the first series and... They kept changing showrunners. Do you reckon it would be the same? Cause, well, do you reckon it would be the same people who did Moonlight? Because we liked Moonlight. We didn't. We? I don't think they'll get the same people. I think they'll bring on a new team. A but new team. there are a lot of people that like Daredevil, I think. Yeah. I, I mean, it's Charlie Cox is coming back. Probably the other cast will come back. Moves on to the next subject, will you? Well, actually, the next subject is just a list of things, shows that are being renewed. So I was just going to run some off. And I, you tell me... If I like them. I, I, you have a reaction. To, I'm going to say something. You have a reaction, which is, oh my God, how is that still going? Or I'm glad they've made another series of that, right? <laughs> so at the top of the list is The Simpsons is coming back for season 34. <gasps> no, I'm not surprised. It has always, always been popular. No surprises there. But season 34 is a bit much. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 it's, I've always had it in the background as one of those things that I could just easily put on. What was the last episode of The Simpsons you watched? It's a good point. What New Simpsons, I mean. Oh, um, I don't know, actually. I can't remember. Didn't say much. I mean, I don't remember much, but it's easy watching. I, I genuinely, I couldn't remember. Like, I remember watching old episodes of The Simpsons, mm. but I couldn't tell you the most recent episode of The Simpsons that I watched the, new. The one episode that st- um, sticks out to me is the one where Homer joins the stonemasons. 
I don't even know what that is. Uh, right, so it's like a, a secret group. In, in is it like the Freemasons in yeah. the UK, but they have Stonemasons yeah, in have America? Same, same. Okay, I didn't know that. The next one is Family Guys renewed for season 21. I absolutely, I love Family Guys. So I, I, I what was the last up. episode of New Family Guy you watched? Well, actually, the last episode was the most latest one. Would you really watch in New New Family Guy? Yeah, I, I, I just watch it online. Okay. I mean, legally, obviously, you wouldn't be doing that. Legally, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I'll only watch Family Guy when they do the Star Wars prequels. That's the only time I'll watch Family Guy. <laughs> I, have you watched when they did the Star Wars? I love this. Those are the only ones that I love. Like, I There's some good episodes of Family Guy. Those, those are the there. best. Well, because Disney owns both Family Guy and Star Wars now, they legally they could, they could do they it. Could do it could I don't be. even know how they got the rights to do it before. Because that would have been Lucasfilm and Fox would have been two separate companies. Maybe how would they have got the rights to... Maybe they just asked for permission and they were given it. I think they probably just asked George Lucas directly. And George Lucas <laughs> went, yeah, whatever. I mean, George Lucas gets paid a, a ton from royalties for selling stuff. George Lucas has a lot of money. <laughs> More money than <laughs> most people should have. <laughs> Uh, the next one on the list is Heartstopper has been renewed for seasons two and no, three. No, you love this. I love Heartstopper. You probably don't have an opinion on this being renewed for two and three, but that's very exciting. <laughs> the leader, the lead actor on Heartstopper actually hosted, uh, not hosted, but presented an award on the BAFTAs a couple of weeks oh, ago. Yeah. So there's, those getting, kids, they're going far, man. They're going far. That could be you one day, playing a, being playing an adult, a teenager. playing a teen. <laughs> you do have that look. Well, they're too. actual teens, these ones. They're like 18. You're too sure. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, the whole of Euphoria cast is all adults. Yeah, but this teens. is very different from Euphoria. T- um, sexual teens? These sure. aren't sexual teens at all. Oh, these are... There's nothing sexual about this. Oh. Uh, it's not like skin... Have you heard that thing about, like, skins in this country, they hired 18-year-olds to play 16-year-olds, but in America they hired 17-year-olds, and they, they got, like... They hired 17-year-olds to play? Like, 17-year-old actors, because they will get... We'll, it'll be real, and we'll have actors at the right, at the right age... And then they got accused of making softcore porn with <laughs> underage actors. <laughs> and they won't be doing that again, I bet. They only had one season of American Skins. <laughs> oh, God. Because, yes, the British Skins is quite hard-hitting. There's a lot of talks about sex, violence, drugs. The British Skins is amazing. And I keep thinking that sex education is making Brit- young British stars in the same way Skins did 10 years ago. You think of someone like Dev Patel, who went on to win Oscars after being in Skins. I think the people that are in... Sex Education will go on to do, like Shooty Gat was going on to do Doctor Who, Emma Mackey's going on to do, she was in Death on the Nile recently, well, the she's ma- in Barbie. The main character um, in Sex Education, I don't know. Asa Butterfield was already yeah, in lots already, of things. Yeah, yeah. I was say, he's already quite famous. Next news. Uh, the next show to be renewed is High School Musical, the musical, the series. I don't It's been renewed si- for season four. <laughs> you, you, I don't have a single hair. Are you not watching High School Musical, the musical, oh, the series? No. You could put a gun to my head and like. Apparently, it's quite good. No, I've, it's I've not. never watched it, but I've he- I hear good things. I'm I'm actively gonna just say no, no, it's not. We go on from things that are being renewed to things that aren't being renewed. Mm. Riverdale is going to end after season seven. Season seven, it lasted that long. I never really watched. Never got into it. Apparently, Riverdale's gone like off the rails recently. I never. I just don't know what it's about. I just. I. I also <laughs> thought. Uh, initially it was about like sexed up teens but oh, apparently it's not yeah it got really weird i mean i've watched a little bit of it and it started off as that it started off as like a murder mystery done by sexy teens and then i think there was like a meteor and things in the recent series there were there was some mad stuff in the recent series i don't watch enough of it to understand all but... i know as well as like one of the, the twins the cole twins are part of it uh cole sprouse oh the sprouse twins sorry not the cole yeah cole sprouse <laughs> uh Cole Sprouse is, uh, along with James Gunn, is one of the whistleblowers about Jared Leto. <laughs> Not that <laughs> we, we mention that. Jared Leto on this podcast anymore, but if you want to, see, if you Google that tweet that James Gunn, oh, no, you showed me. I showed you that tweet. <laughs> it's the first thing you showed me when, when I happened. say Google. I was talking to the listener, yeah. not just you. <laughs> <laughs> when we're talking to each other, but also to the listener, James. <laughs> I want the attention. <laughs> Give me attention. Uh, should we go on to some trailers? I'm going to ask oh, you if yes. you've seen them, and you're probably going to say no. Okay. Right. First trailer is She Hulk. Seen it. Seen it? Good. I, I, yeah, I mean, they're bringing Hulk in it, so... And I do like him, Mark Ruffalo. Uh, but I saw the trailer, I quite like the look of it. In in the comic books, <laughs> She-Hulk is one of those characters that, like, talks to the reader, and I think they're going to be pushing away from that in this oh, series. Right. I, li- I like um, they're keeping her as a, a lawyer, and I feel, I feel like what the impression I got from the trailer is that they're going to not just have as 
her discovering her powers and stuff like that is going to be her being an, a lawyer and an attorney. And I like that. I like the look of that. We were speaking about Daredevil earlier. There's mm. some talk that Daredevil might be in this as Matt Murdock. Maybe being a fellow, fellow well, they are fellow lawyers. Yeah. Right? Uh, the next trailer is This England. Have you seen that? I have. I remember watching it in the cinema when you asked me. I told you to watch it before. I told you to watch all of these, but you watched that one. It's the, it's the one with Boris J. Johnson. And Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like Kenneth Branagh. It does Branagh. not look like That's Kenneth. the only reason this is notable. I wouldn't bring this up if Kenneth Branagh didn't look like Boris Johnson. Um, go on, please, uh, tell me the next trailer. Oh, the next one is Love, Victor, season four. Do you know what that is? I actually haven't. This is... Uh... Oh, it's another teen drama that I watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Again, it's one of those ones that I didn't think people would care about, but I cared, so I put it in. No, no. What's it about? It's, it's a sequel series to Love, Simon, which was a uh, rom-com, a gay rom-com from a couple of years ago. And then there's a new kid that turns up at the same school. It's basically the same as the movie, but with a different kid. And they're on season four, and it's going to be their last season, which is why uh, I put it in, because it's the last one. But it's a really nice show. It's a nice show. It is a nice show. And obviously there was a boys trailer this week. The boys. I do love the Jensen boys. Eccles was in it. Jensen Eccles. We like Jensen we, Eccles we on this podcast. We do like Jensen, Jensen Eccles. You, have you seen the boys trailer? Of course I've seen the boys what, what, trailer. What are your opinions on the boys trailer, James? I'm excited to see how crazy he goes. The super soldier. Captain America. Captain America. We've already seen a crazy Superman. No, that, that's the boys' try. I mean, it's the boys. You know what to expect, yeah. right? Right, there was a trailer for 3,000 Years of Longing. Do you know what this is? No, no. This is George Miller's next film. George Miller, whose previous film was Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, okay. There's a load of people in this. I don't really want to list everyone. It looks like quite a good film. We'll probably be watching what, that. Do you know what's about? I know nothing. Tilda Swinton's in it. Idris Elba's in it. There's a handful of people, a handful of big names in it. It's George Miller. Adapted from the, the gin in the Night Gale's Eye. George, you're good. I like George Miller. I love Babe, A Pig in the City. No, not related to Ezra Miller. No, not at all. George Miller's Australian. He was a doctor. An actual doctor? Like an actual doctor. Oh, and that's why in, in the original Mad Max, there's lots of people with deformities and missing arms and things because George Miller knew them from his time as a doctor. Really? And he contacted them and said, look, I'm making this movie. That's Do you want to be in it? That's pretty cool. Oh, fair play. Respect. Uh, he's great. I mean, he did all the Mad Maxes. He did Babe, A Pig in the City. He did Happy Feet, One and Two. Happy Feet. He's very versatile, right? He's Going from Happy Feet 2 to Mad, to Mad Max. Max Fury Road. Like one film after the other. And then they're not, they're not even like on the same diagram, whatever. That's not, they're not related to each other at all. No, he makes good films. And a lot of them are Australian funded and things like that. So he does good stuff for his local economy. He lives in Sydney. I don't know how I know so much about... It's like you're a crush on him. I, I you like might the do. guy. <laughs> I like the guy. Well... There isn't a trailer that's come out, but there's news that there's going to be a Thor trailer on Monday. There was a little video that Chris Hemsworth and Taika Waititi put out saying, Oi, you, listen, there's going to be a trailer on Monday. But we're recording this on Sunday. So by the time the listener is hearing this, the trailer's out. Mm. But just know at the time of recording, there is no trailer, so we can't comment on it. There's also been a load of Stranger Things clips this week. I don't know if you've seen any of those. No, no, I'm, I've never actually really watched Stranger Things. They've been, they've been releasing runtimes for episodes as well. It's a series, James. I don't know how many episodes in the series, six or eight. Um, but the final episode of the series, which is, I think, the final episode ever, two and a half hours. Whoa. Too long, right? Too long. And then every episode is apparently an, more than an hour long. I think that's too long for a series. More than an hour long. No, I, I like, an hour is the sweet spot. Hour and a half you save for specials. And two and a half hours, what do you do for that? Grab a box of popcorn. That's not, a TV, that's that's not a, an that's episode a of TV, though, is it? That's a, that's a bloody movie, mate. Uh, the next trailer is there was just a teaser for the Predator prequel. Now, I made a joke to you six months ago or something where I said they should call the next Predator Prey. It would be about Predator being hunted or something like that. What do you think they've called the Predator pre prequel, James? I'm going to assume it's something an original called Predator Prey. It's called Prey. Is it actually? It's actually called Prey. <laughs> Predator Prey. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just called Prey, actually, but it's like, that's like a subtitle, isn't it? But I thought that was funny. Oh, Pepper, you're like a psychic. I could, I, I could write shitty movies that no one wants <laughs> to be no, made. To choose the lottery numbers next. You want to pick my lottery numbers? <laughs> I'm actually very lucky. <laughs> and obviously, the next trailer I've got written down is Multiverses trailer. Now, what I wanted to do for this, James, was I wanted to describe to you what happened, and you tell me if you thought what I was saying was real. But we can't do that, James, because I've already watched the trailer. Because you already watched the trailer in I, front of me to spite me. No, no, I watched it before. No, watched, yeah. And to be fair, 
to describe if I described it, 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 it wouldn't be have crazy. Me. Because not only is there Batman, there's all mighty Shaggy in it. Batman turns up, and then Shaggy turns up, and then Shaggy turns on fire because he goes all powerful. Yeah, he's um he's all powerful Shaggy. It's, you know where the meme is from. I know the meme. It's it's a weird trailer, and I don't understand what this thing is. I think it's like a, it's a game. It's like a fighting game, yeah. right? I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it just because of that trailer. I'm, it's not really my thing, but... I won't purchase it, but I'll watch it. And then we have two final bits of news. Really quickly, there's a, f- a first image for v- Gwendolyn Christie as Lucifer in Netflix's Sandman. I don't know if you saw this image. Yeah, I've seen the trailer for the Sandman. Yeah, there was a picture of Gwendolyn Christie today. She looked great. She looks like... you know, There's a lot of people complaining on, on the interwebs that she's a woman. But if you look at early Sandman comics, she looks just like Lucifer in that. And Lucifer is inherently a kind of um, uh, androgynous gonna, uh, character. I was say, Lucifer uh, in the in the comic book itself is... Uh, Lucifer in, like, scripture is a kind of androgynous mm-hmm. character. Yeah. No, I mean, Lucifer in the comic books and something like is a male, but he does take the form of a female sometimes. I mean, they're demons, James. Yeah. Demons don't necessarily conform to our <laughs> human ideas of gender. Do you know who would be really good? Did you ever watch Two Broke Girls? Well, isn't Kat Dennings... Kat Dennings is the voice of death in... Yeah, she in, is. ...in the um, audiobooks. I remember listening to her, and she plays it so well. She has such a nice voice. I know her personally. She's really nice. Of course you know her personally. I know everyone personally. <laughs> I am well-connected with uh, the who's who of Hollywood. Have you, um... Tinseltown, as people <laughs> in, in the know call it. Have you seen that, um, as... Uh, it's like the Kevin Bacon meter. How, how far does Kevin Bacon... Uh, seven... Degree, six yeah. degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever got the six degrees of Roman. Oh, no, I've met Kevin Bacon, so... So you know everyone. <laughs> you said you know everyone. I haven't met, I've never met Kevin Bacon, but um, I, did, I did this with my dad once, and I was like, I think I'm three or four degrees of Kevin Bacon away from Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Which is quite good, I think, because I met Simon Pegg and Simon Pegg was in something with someone that was in <laughs> something else with Kevin Bacon. So I think I'm three degrees of separation. <laughs> your, your claim to fame, three degrees of separation from, from Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon himself. Fantastic. Uh, I have one bit of news, actually. Oh. One more bit of news. One more bit of news. Lay it on me, lay it. Disney signs a deal with Stanley Universe to license Stanley's name and likeness for use in future films, TV, theme parks, merchandising through digital technology, archival footage and other forms. Oh, that's nice. Disney have turned Stanley into a puppet and they're going to parade his corpse about their theme parks and they're going to wave him around in movies. Anything to get a bit of money for them. I mean, I haven't noticed that Stanley hasn't been in... No, no, me neither. I haven't really noticed. And it's Stan Lee, but you don't know these things, do you? And I think it's just weird that... Well, they're using his a dead body to yeah, parade. I mean, it's not, they're not actually parading a dead body about... No, that would be weird. Digitally, they, Digital. they, they'll have a puppet where they can... Better than getting, like, a younger version. They recast <laughs> Stan Lee. <laughs> Recasting Stan Lee in a Well, film. we've learned from Kathleen Kennedy that we can't recast <laughs> the, old, the OG characters. It's nearly impossible. There you go. And that links everything together. <laughs> and you're all in a wrap. A nice little bow for all of the muse, and we'll end the muse with one of the ones we started. I think that's a nice little end. We should probably end the muse there. So now we're going to do our main bulk of the podcast, or the main topic, and why people are probably here. And that's to review the film The Northman. Do you think people have waited the two months since this came out for our review yes. before going to see it in the cinema? 100%. They'll want to know now if it's worth it for The Dust is Settled. Directed by Robert Eggers. No, Robert Eggers is right. Who? What was his previous film? You tell me. Um, his previous film was The Lighthouse, starring Willem Dafoe, who was in this for he a short period. This one. And Batman was in it. That is right. Chris, Christian, I was going to say Christian Bale. Batman, of... Batman, Christian Bale, Sorry. and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, Robert Battinson. Rob, Rob Bat Battinson. Rob Bat Battinson. That was his previous film, The Lighthouse. That's really weird. Robert Battinson uh, has really sex good. with a mermaid and then goes and smashes the light in the lighthouse. Yeah. Have you seen Interesting. that? No, but you spoiled it for me now. There's a lot more that happens in any <laughs> sector of the mermaid. Apparently, Anya Taylor Joy, who was in his previous film, which was The Witch, but it's spelt with two V's rather than a W, so it's The Witch. The um, Witch. Okay. I think I think that's like like the traditional Nordic or something way of the, saying it or something. The 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 lady from the Queen's Gambit. The lady from the Queen's Gambit's in it. Uh, she was in The Witch, but also she asked if she could be the mermaid in The Lighthouse, and he said. Look, Anya, you don't want to be that. Then I've got a role for you in my next thing. Don't you worry. And she was in this. Why did she not? Why? Why would? Because you... some weird stuff happens to the mermaid, James. What I don't happens? want to go into go, on, go into the weird stuff it. that happens. It's fine. Don't worry. Go on, you should. You should watch. 
The Lighthouse. It's a it's a masterpiece of cinema. It's black and white as well. Does that put you off? No, no, no. I'm not one of these guys that needs it in colour. The whole world is my colour. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. She made it up on the spot. You should you should start. You should be a rapper. I should be a rapper. I should I should write podcasts for them. Do people write podcasts? Are we doing no this way. wrong? We've not written anything down. I mean, as people can tell, we don't write anything or plan really much. Speak for yourself. I had three pages of Muse today. <laughs> Yeah. I put a lot of effort into this. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. You just turned up. <laughs> I just turned up. I really should start preparing more. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of carrying the weight of this podcast upon my own shoulders. I mean, I'm going to the gym. I, I don't need to do any more car- carrying you okay. on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> looking, looking pretty weak down there, but we're both gonna be so buff. You from going to the gym and me from carrying this the podcast. weight of this podcast. <laughs> well, let's, let's skip on to that. So, Ronan, my dear, what did? Uh... What was the film? Have we mentioned the film is called The Northman? We have. We mentioned it's directed by Robert Eggers. We have mentioned that it stars Alexander Starsgard. Uh, we mentioned that Willem Dafoe is in it. Willem Dafoe's in it. Um, Ethan Hawke's in it in the beginning. Who is in Moonlight? Nicole Kidman's in it, and Bjork's in it for maybe a minute, yeah. two minutes tops. She's not in it for very long, but she has a very substantial role. She does. Bjork. We won't get into that. We it's it's probably difficult to spoil <clears throat> anything. We won't mention anyone that dies or anything at any point. But did you think it was about thirty minutes too long? I thought it was much longer than than it needed to be. It 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 has a very clear <clears throat> point, and it takes a very long time yeah. to get to that. There are maybe three occasions where you go, why didn't you just kill the guy that you want to kill here? No, li- literally, I was I said this to you in the cinema, I was like, why didn't he just kill her? Oh, sorry, him. There, it would be so easy. But in Bjork's prophecy, she said Alexander Starsgard had to die in battle, and she said that their final battle would have to be in a sea of fire, is the phrase she used. Yeah. And in the end, I suppose that's I mean, what you he did call do it. it. But there's still so many scenes that could be cut out. I mean, visually, it was stunning. Don't get me it's wrong. Such a, and there's some weird dream sequences at the beginning. There were some weird ones. It was good. The cinematography is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Can you check if it's been shot on location or set? I'm going to Because I hope it was... You fell. Lo- I was going to say, hopefully it's on location, as the scenery was absolutely stunning. It reminds me of a, a Lord of the Rings where everything was shot and long, long um, widescreen, so you can take in the surroundings, you can take in the whole view, and it's absolutely... The, the Visually, it was absolutely stunning. Film on locations, either Ireland or Iceland. So they did film on so locations. So basically, grassy bits are Ireland. <coughs> the mountainy bits are probably Iceland. Iceland yeah. I, I mean, there's a very clear distinction between which bits are what bits. The studio was in Belfast for any interior stuff. And I was going to look for a cinematographer while I'm here as well. Probably some um, Icelandic guy. Maybe. A lot of Icelandic people were. Oh, I'll tell you where he's from. Born in Westminster, California. Ah, Icelandic. <laughs> yeah. But he was a cinematographer on The Lighthouse. He was a cinematographer on Vavitch. Um, there's a handful of films he was a cinematographer on here. He's obviously doing good work. In comparison to... I've not seen The Witch, but I've seen The Lighthouse... This is a considerably more visually stunning mm. film. On purpose, I think the lighthouse does. It kind of stays. Stays on the lighthouse. It has a. It has a. Um, it has an almost one by one aspect ratio. So the cinematographer who did cinematography, Jaron Bl- Blaschek, um, spelled B L A S C H K E, Blaschek. I assume that's so. Apologies if I do get it wrong. He was the cinematographer on Servant. And Which is the M. Night Shyamalan series. In Crozier. He's also on The Lighthouse. And on The Witch, I believe, as well. Down a Dark Hall. Black Roads. That's fantastic. He's got a quite a big career, then. Very. And he's been on ro- ro- all of Robert Eggers' films, because this is only Robert Eggers' third film. Imagine having this is your third film. I wonder what his next film would be. Well, he keeps... Uh, threatening to do a Nosferatu remake. Threatening, like, um, <laughs> I will make it for you. I will make it. I don't know why anyone would want to do a Nosferatu remake, but that's what he wants to do, and he's been talking. Apparently, that's what he wanted his debut film to be, but no one would give him the rights to Nosferatu, so he said, oh, I'll make a couple of good films first, and then I'll give me the rights to Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's, that's true. a strange Who's thing to Nosferatu want to do. owned by? I don't know. I mean, he's just a vampire, though, right? Can't you just do a vampire movie? Yeah, I'm going to be just easier. And isn't Nicolas Cage currently doing a Nosferatu movie? Well, 
He talks about it in The Unbearable Weight of Mass Attack, how Nosferatu is a very good film. He does, but I think I saw him. Did you not see the image of him on oh, set? Oh, yes, yes. I remember you showing me a picture. No, that's what I'm talking Yeah, I reckon it's just Nick Cage playing Nick Cage, Nick Cage in Nosferatu. I just think it's weird that in 2022, there might be two different Nosferatu <laughs> movies. Like, it's Nosferatu. Yeah, who's going to give a crap? I know, it? right? But, I mean, I mean... Good on him if he thinks he can make that successful. This has been very successful. Uh, you'll look at money later on, but oh, I've only heard good things about this. That's the thing. I've heard good things about the show. I'll, I'll go into the money now. So let's talk about the budget first. Guess how much the budget is. Well, I've got an inkling it's about 70 million, but I don't know that for a fact. That feels about right, though. So the budget was an astounding 90 million. 90? 90. That's a hell of a lot of money, actually. Guess how much it's brought in. Less than it's 90. It's actually, it's box office gross on Box Office Mojo. Worldwide, about 60 million. That's not great. And I don't think, it's a very dark film, <laughs> and I don't think it'll do as well on streaming. That's the thing. As something like, because this is A24 as well, so we should probably compare it to what we looked at last week, which was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah. And I think that will do very well on streaming. Whereas this, it's not a particularly... Family-friendly film. It's not even that. It's like, I don't think it will look as good no, on like a home TV. It's very dark and gritty in some aspects. And it's something you have to see in the cinema, yeah, right? It is something, yeah. I, again, I, I thought I thought it'd be one of those movies that... I tend to find that with A24 movies, that they, they're always like really good. They're, they're different. They're something else. They're not They're main. interesting. They're interesting. They? they are all interesting. But they wouldn't make as much money because they don't they don't appeal to the masses. Well, everything everywhere all at once this week became A twenty four's most financially successful movie. Oh, it did it crossed seven hundred million dollars domestically? I think good for them. Something well, like we that, loved yeah. it. To be fair, I really liked it. So yeah. it's had a big week since we reviewed it last week. It wasn't We're as not... popular before we reviewed it. People <laughs> waited for say. our review. Thank you to all the listeners, <laughs> the listeners, <laughs> the, the plural. We probably have a few now. Do you think? I don't know. <laughs> it, I think it's still just me. <laughs> still just me editing on Sunday nights. But that's the thing. It's quite surprised. I'm not. I'm not that. No, I'm not that um, surprised at that. By like with the Vikings, it was very much done on TV. And I'm thinking, like, did you ever watch Vikings the TV I show? I didn't watch the show. No, but I know. And I think it was all played out after the Vikings finished. Do you think people are done with the idea of Vikings? No, not done completely. But uh, they may be all Vikinged out. <laughs> You reckon Robert Eggers could should have made his Nosferatu movie and yes. then this afterwards? Exactly. Brought back it. Nah, nah. Too fair. Vikings Two Show was pretty good. No, but I think overall, James, it's it's it is a really interesting film. It is far too long. It is. And I think a film of this length, it really needs to justify its runtime. Mm. And we can we can talk about films like if a film is ninety minutes, I will watch That's it regardless. Spot. But if a film is What's this? Two hours and twenty. Two hours twenty. You've got to justify being two hours and twenty to tell your story, and I don't think this there's I don't think there's enough substance to this story to do. That's to do that. There are multiple scenes in it. So the guy is in the trailers where the guy wants to kill his uncle, and there's so many scenes where you like you could kill him right there and then. It'd be so easy, but then he doesn't, and it's just like why? And it's just a lot of waiting, a lot of it's a lot of build up to be fair for something you know that's going to happen. Anyway, regardlessly, yeah. so you could cut that down, still have that build up. You cut down on the build up because you know it's going to happen eventually. And yeah, it'd be it'd be a lot better. What, what, I'm going to go on to the rating bits. Are you going to rate it? All right. I am. I'm going to give it a six. Yeah. Yeah. Visually stunning. I just found the the story was good. I wouldn't say strong, but yeah, it was visually spectacular. One of the best movies just on like location I've seen because that was, it was really beautiful. Iceland and Ireland have got amazing Th views. those famously beautiful countries you think they look very good in this movie do you absolutely <laughs> absolutely stunning well you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen go visit those Iceland. famously beautiful countries <laughs> might be worth visiting yeah i've heard this what as other countries are i think new zealand is yeah i've, I've quite, never heard of that country never you never heard of never the country, heard new of the country new zealand. <laughs> well apparently you might, you might like to get there some nice yeah. views okay, if you say so <laughs> We live in quite a beautiful country. We do, we do indeed. England. No I'm joking, we mm. live in Wales. Don't dox us. There's only, there's only like 10 people in Wales. <laughs> they can find us quite easily. <laughs> do, do you know those boys down the pub, you know, yeah. You, you, you're joking, but every time I've met someone from, like when I went to uni, I met a couple of people that were Welsh. 
I knew people that they knew. <laughs> that always felt weird that I was like... Really? What kind of, what, I was going to say, because when I went to uh, place... Uh, yeah, but you went, you went to uni up north, so you'll have met North Wales people. North Wales people, yeah. Everyone I met was like, oh, I'm from Penarth, or I'm from Cardiff. I'm like, do you know so-and-so? And they're like, yeah, I went to school. <laughs> <laughs> God, no. And that happened maybe five times when I was at uni. Oh, no. Um, so... Is there anything else you want to say about this movie, James? Bjork was in was all Bjork. over the posters and everything, and she was in it for maybe to, two minutes. I have to ask her who Bjork was. I just I don't know who that is. I still don't know. James who that isn't is. particularly cultured. He doesn't know. Oh, so quiet. <laughs> She's Am I going to have to listen to this song to get this? Kind of, yeah. Is it good? I don't think it's your kind of thing. No, I'm more into deaf Viking meth. <laughs> James was talking about how much he likes My Chemical Romance on the way over here, so I don't think Bjork is his thing. Me and Ronan were just jamming out, you know. Listening, waving our hands in the air. Listen to some Backstreet Boys. I mean, I am a Backstreet Boy, but I don't. Sorry, some S Club as well. No, I like uh, I like the, I like the boy band Five. Do you know Five? So there's this boy band Five, <laughs> and they were huge about twenty twenty five years ago, and then they broke up, uh, and one one of the band members Jay went off and did whatever, and they broke up, and they were a big band. You'll have heard everybody get up, and you'll have heard some of their big songs, uh, and then they came back for this. Channel 4 show called The Big Reunion and they asked Jay Jay do you want to come back to 5 and they were called 5 because there were 5 of them and Jay said I don't really want to come back so they went on The Big Reunion as 5 but there were only 4 <laughs> of them they're still touring as 5 but one of them subsequently left so there's only 3 of them so there's 5 <laughs> they're called 5 but sometimes I mean they're, they're like a 2000s rap group so about halfway through some of their songs there's name calls and they go is Jay here? And they still do the roll calls <laughs> as if Jay's there, but Jay's not there. Oh, that's that's a little bit cringe. I think they should start doing should three stop. or five, <laughs> like a fraction. Three, three or five. <laughs> <laughs> what would you rate the film then? Well, how, how would you rate this? Well, my rating on this show, as you're very much aware, James, is would I go out during a global pandemic to see the movie? And to be honest, I was before seeing it, I'd probably have said no because it's come out on streaming. I don't know where I see. I've seen it on Twitter that it's on streaming. Maybe it just is in America. It's available for streaming in some countries, I believe. Mm. I'd still go to the cinema to see it if you can because it's very dark and I think you would struggle to watch some parts of it on your own TV and things. Is this one where the film is much better in the cinema? So if you did watch this at home... I think you, it would look much better in the cinema. Yeah, yeah, and then if you watch it at home, you'd be like, oh, it's just not as good because the vi it, like the visual visual aspect of it is just not... I, think, I just it. think you wouldn't be able to see some of it. Hmm. There's, some, there's some interior stuff where people are backlit, and in the cinema you can see elements of their face, but I think if I was watching it on my home TV, I would just see a silhouette. Like a three-minute scene, just a silhouette doesn't really work. So I don't know if you felt that way. No, no, I did. I think there were some scenes in the cave, and it's like it was pretty hard to to see the whole yeah. scene of it. But I mean, that played into what was happening. And that's part of the dark. cinematography in the film. Yeah. But at some point, if you can't see it, you can't watch it at home, can you? No, absolutely. And I think that's that's my criticism of the later Harry Potter movies: is some of those are a bit too Super. dark visually. That, that you, visual impairment. Yeah, I, like genuinely, I think some of them, it's difficult to see at times. Absolutely. Is that all we've got to that, say on that's this? That's all of it today. Um, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I don't think so. I, I feel like we haven't said that much on the Northman, but we... Um, so what would we be talking about next week? That's um, a good question, James. And as you were asking, I was thinking, I should probably check that before he <laughs> asks. And then you asked. So <laughs> I was like, he's, he's rushing me. But I need to just really quickly scroll down IMDb. I'm rather excited. I heard it's something good. Oh, you know what it is then? Then why are you saying you know it's something good? <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to... You, you're filling for time, just okay. For time. Well, well, we'll we'll cut here and just be like... 27th of May, Top Gun Maverick, or Bob's Burgers the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about Bob's Burgers. You're joking, but that's a good show. No, it is a good show. Um, Top Gun Maverick, I've heard some good things of it. It's so. a bit strange that Bob's Burgers the movie comes out halfway through the season, season 12 <laughs> of Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Is that being renewed for a season 13? I haven't seen anything about oh. it this week. Well, you heard it here, folks. We're watching Bob's Burgers next week. Not I mean, I'd, Top Gun. I'd, I'd probably prefer to see that over Top Gun. It'll be I shorter. Wouldn't. I was joking. I'm all watching Top Gun. Top Gun is the same length as the movie we saw today. Two hours and for 17 or whatever it Jeez, is. It's also two hour movies now. It's also Top Gun. Like, I don't care. How dare you? I didn't care when it was... Just him and Goose. And Val Kilmer. I didn't care when they had that really gay 
volleyball match on the beach that's so sexually charged, but no one that watches it ever thinks that it's sexually charged. It's very sexually it's charged. It's so sexually charged. And I speak to, I, you speak to like... You speak to all of them. You yeah. speak to really macho men and you're like, that's a really gay scene. And they're like, no, that's a really manly scene. And they're expressing their love... Through volleyball. Through, through volleyball for each other. <laughs> through like the a medium for each other. of dance. And I'm just like, those two men so clearly want to kiss... Well, there's only one way to find out. We'll come back to you next week. Oh, obviously I know Tom Cruise, so I could just ask him. <laughs> yeah, what are you, three degrees away from him as well? Well, less than that, because I've met Simon Pegg and Simon Pegg's in... Oh, you have met Simon I'm two Pegg. degrees away two from degrees. Two Tom Cruise. That's actually quite exciting. <laughs> you should message Simon Pegg saying, Simon Pegg, can you show me Tom Cruise? Can you introduce me to your good friend Tom Cruise, my good friend Simon Pegg, who I met once <laughs> last year? Who I made what? Who made laugh once? I made a joke about cake, and he laughed once. <laughs> he wouldn't remember me. Tom, listen. Then. What was the joke about cake? It doesn't even make sense. Like, so we were on set, me and my good friend Simon Pegg, uh, and I was talking to someone else, and they were like, "Do you reckon we could have some cake?" I'm like, "We'd be in trouble if we had cake, but Simon, if you had a little bit of cake." you wouldn't be in trouble. And then if we had some afterwards, we also wouldn't be in trouble. So you should have the cake first. And he had a good laugh about that. That's maybe the only time I've in- interacted with Simon Pegg. I did eight days on the film, on the show. You never so. spoke to him again. You missed out. I didn't get his number, unfortunately. unfortunately. <laughs> Simon Pegg, can I have your number, please? There were, there, were, there were 30 of us there, but I was the only one that made him laugh. So. <laughs> that, that's going on your tombstone. Made Simon It's on my Pegg. CV. Nah. <laughs> I hope so, because that'd be brilliant. I made Simon Pegg laugh once. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it, we, we could just talk for another 10 minutes about all of the famous people I've met. If we I'm, I don't even want to listen to that. Couldn't, couldn't we talk about previous Doctor Who's? Nope. Peter Capaldi I met earlier. And thanks to that, I am done. Do I not want we'll to mention see, Matt we'll Smith was running with the Olympic torch in 2012 on the when I met him? We we will um, speak to you guys next week. Is this the end of the Tom show, Cruise. really? Yes. Yeah. You've been serious? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for listening to That's Wizard, ladies and gentlemen. And do you want to pull us out with... That's Wizard. (laughs) 